Okay, so um, when we are working things out like the likes of this, we have the subtraction, then we have the multiplication, and we got to remember which one we've got to do first. And of course, things are going to get a little bit more complicated later on. For example, here we've got an exponent, we've got parentheses, we've got addition, we've got uh, multiplication. So what do we do first, all right? So we'll quickly run over PEMDAS. The order of operations says we must first start and simplify anything inside parentheses. Right, and by all means write this out again. I mean, I've written it out so many times, I remember it. So you guys can do the same. Just write it out again. The second thing we do after that is all exponents. Take care of all exponents, right? The third thing is we multiply or divide from left to right. Okay? The fourth thing, because multiplication and division are considered the same importance, so we just go from left to right and do all do the multiplication or the division as you go, right? And the fourth thing is you go from left to right and you add or subtract. So add or subtract from left to right. Okay. So parentheses, then exponents, then multiply or divide from left to right, then add or subtract from left to right, and you'll be good. Okay, so let's start with this guy. There are two operations I can see, subtraction and multiplication. Which operation should we do first? Should I do 8 minus 2 and 3 fifths? Or should I first start with 2 and 3 fifths multiplied by 1 and a half? Well, again, order of operations should tell us. Uh, let's see. We have parentheses, by the way, but there's nothing to, f to figure out inside of that. I mean, these are just no mixed numbers by themselves. We don't have any exponents, no squares and cubes and that type of thing. Exponent is a squared or a cubed, right? Um, multiply, we do. We've got multiply, and then afterwards we subtract. So we'll multiply first, then we'll subtract, right? Okay, so we'll multiply and mixed numbers. Do you remember how to do that? We've got to to multiply mixed numbers we've got to turn them into improper improper fractions okay so turn this mixed number into an improper fraction you go 5 times 2 is 10 and 10 plus 3 is 13 so we got 13 fifths right multiplied by 2 times 1 is what 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3 halves, right? Interesting. Does anything cross-cancel there? I don't see anything that cross-cancels there, okay, do you? So, I just go ahead and multiply it then. 13 times 3, you can do it over here if you want. 13 times 3, 3 threes is 9, 3 1 is 3. So that's 39. All over, 5 times 2, 10. Okay. So this multiplication becomes 39 over 10. I'm just going to leave it like that for now. Just don't change it yet because, uh, okay, we've got 8 minus 39 over 10. Okay. And um, if you, I guess if you wanted, you could put that as a mixed number. 10 into 39 goes 3 times the 9 tenths, but you don't really have to. Because if you did that, then you would have to start borrowing and stuff. So, I mean... You know, we could just leave it as tenths for now and then figure it out in the end, if we like, okay? So, um, so um, let's see, 8 minus 39 tenths. The problem is, I don't have a common denominator. First of all, write 8 as a fraction. How would you write the number 8 as a fraction? 8 over 1, right? Now, make these bottoms the same. Make these bottoms the same? You'd have to multiply this by what? 1 times what gives 10? By 10, right? Yeah, we got to multiply this guy by 10 over 10. So I get 80 tenths minus 39 tenths. See that? Now subtract, okay? So 80, 39, subtract. So I've got to carry, okay, so I've got to go, well, 0 minus sign won't work, so I've got to turn that into a 7, borrow 1. Now 10 minus 9 is 1. 7 minus 4 is, or minus 3 is that 4, isn't it? 
So I get 41 over 10. And that's an improper fraction, so you might as well write that as a mixed number, right? 10 into 41 goes four times, remainder one, so four and one tenth, and that's the answer. Okay? So the trick was we followed them now, so we multiplied first, then we subtracted. We could have turned this into a, a mixed uh, number, n uh, three and nine tenths, so we would have ended up with the same answer, four and a tenth. That's correct. I mean, but you didn't have to. You could just leave it as an improper and keep working it out. Okay, so we'll do. Okay, so we'll go on to example two. We've got two fifths times three quarters plus four times two and three quarters. Now, sh what should I do first? I have um, two multiplications, this one and this one, and I have an addition. Well, let's see. Addition is down here, multiply is here. So I don't have to work anything out in parentheses, I have no exponents, but I should multiply from left to right first of all. In other words, you should do this multiplication, then this multiplication. So multiply from left to right, and then you add at the end, right? So we'll do this, and then this, and then we'll add in the at the end, okay? So we'll go ahead, and by all means press pause and try it yourself, or you could race me and see if you can get done before me, okay? So um, I'm going to multiply these guys now. If I want to multiply mixed numbers, I've got to turn them into improper fractions, right? So of course this is just two-fifths, That's that he's fine. But this guy, turn him into an improper fraction. 4 times 3, 12. 12 plus 1, 13. Yep, 13 quarters, right? Now, does anything cross-cancel there? 2 into 2 goes once, 2 into 4 goes twice. Anything else? No. So 1 times 13 is 13. 5 times 2 is 10. So I've got 13 tenths. Just leave it like that for now. That might, you know, y you can do it. You can write that as 1 and 3 tenths, but just leave it as an improper for now. It might be okay, right? So we're going to do the, so we've got to add, uh, but we've got to, we're going to calculate this multiplication now, okay? So to multiply, I've got to change everything to a fraction. The first thing you got to change to a fraction is the number four. Write the number four as a fraction. Four over one. Yep. Multiply it by this guy. Write him as an improper fraction. Two and three quarters. Four times two is eight. Eight plus three. 11 quarters, right? <coughs> now, does anything cross cancel? 4 into 4 goes once, 4 into 4 goes once, right? So 1 times 11 is 11, 1 times 1 is 1, so I have 11 over 1. Now, I'm adding fractions. So um, I'm just going to leave that as 11 over 1 because that might be useful. Because look, I have to add these guys now. That's my last operation. And I need to get a lowest common denominator, right? So go ahead and get a lowest common denominator. What do I multiply this guy to get tenths? 10, right? Yep, multiply this by 10 over 10. So I have 13 over 10 plus. 110 over 10. What does that give? Add the unit 3 and 0, that's 3. Add the tens, 1 and 1 is 2. And 100. So 123 all over 10. And now you can write the answer as a mixed number. So that would be nice. Just at the very end, it would give the answer as a mixed number, right? 10 into 12 goes one time. Remainder 2, oh, you know what it is. 10 into 23 goes uh, twice, remainder 3. It's It's got to be 12 and 3 tenths, right? Okay, so um, example 2. We've got 2 minus 7 eighths times 2 plus 7 eighths. We've got a couple of things to work out here. What do we do first? Well, consult our order of operations, PEMDAS. Parentheses, exponents, multiply, divide, add, or subtract. Okay, I have two separate parentheses. 
Now the first thing the first op thing to do is parentheses. What that means is you need to work out whatever is inside parentheses. Like we have to work out the two minus seven eighths and then we have to work out the two plus seven eighths. Okay? And then we'll I guess we'll multiply or something after that, right? So we have to work out this guy, two minus seven eighths first, right? So to work him out, we're going to to work him out, we're going to first of all get a lowest common denominator, because I'm subtracting fractions, right? So two is the same thing as two over one, right? Now make the bottoms the same. Lowest common denominator would be times one times what gives eight? One times eight, right? But multiply top by eight as well. Okay? So two times eight is sixteen. So I have sixteen eighths minus seven eighths. What's sixteen minus seven? And that's of course in parentheses, isn't it? Right? Sixteen minus seven is nine. So in my parentheses here I have nine eighths. Great, so I work this guy out to be nine eighths. Don't just leave him alone. Like I know he, he could be turned into a mixed number. Just leave him alone for now. You he might be nice to be in that form for what we when we get to this. Okay? So be, don't be in any hurry to turn anything into a mixed number in these problems because it might it may not the improper fraction is is often quite helpful. Okay. Anyway, um, two plus seven eighths. Uh, go ahead and uh, figure out what that is. Press pause and do it. Then I'll do it. Same way. You got it. Okay, I'm going to do it now. Two is two over one times it by eight over eight. That gives me 16 eighths plus 7 eighths. 16 and 7 is uh, the 23. Okay, so I have 9 eighths times 23 eighths. Does anything cross cancel? Uh, unfortunately not. I can't see anything. So, um, of course, on the bottom, 8 eighths is 64. And the top, we got a little bit of long division there. 9 times 23. Okay, so 23 times 9. 9 threes is 27. Carry the 2. Nine two, two nines is 18 and 2 is 20. So I have 207 over 64. Now that's my answer. I'd also like to put that into um, as a mixed number. So I'm just going to go quickly. 64 into 207. 64 into that. Let's see how many times um, I know that three eighths is three six or three sixes is eighteen, so three sixties is one hundred and eighty. So I'm going to guess three. See if that works out for me. Three times four is uh, twelve. Carry the one. Three times six is eighteen, and one is nineteen. Subtract, and I get seven minus two is five. Twenty minus nineteen is one. So my answer is three remainder fifteen. So this becomes whole number three and. 15 60 fourths. Now, does that fraction simplify? The practice of 15, 15 is uh, 5 times 3. Does 3 go into 64? No. Nope. Does 5 go into 64? Nah, because it ends in a 4, right? So that's the answer there. But the trick, uh, the, 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 I mean, the main part of the problem, of course, was to, to figure out the parentheses first inside there. And, and just leave your answers as improper fractions and multiply them. Okay. Now, th this is correct as an improper, but I think if we could just write them all as mixed numbers in the end as well, just so we have that practice. Okay. Okay. So, um, here's example four and example five. By all means, press pause and try it yourself, and then check to see if you get the same thing as me. Okay, I'm going to try example four now. And um, I've got to start with parentheses, then do exponents, then multiply, divide, and all that. So when it says start with parentheses, it means if you have something that needs to be calculated inside of parentheses, do that first. I do. I have three and a half plus a half. So I need to do this first. Then I'm going to tackle the exponents, which is that cube. But we'll just do one step at a time, okay? So um, I'm just going to figure out uh, add these guys in there. So three and a half plus a half. Can you just like 
say what that is. Three and a half plus a half. I mean, we could work it out, but we should know off the top of our heads right away. What's a half and a half? I mean, if you want, you can write that as three and two halves. Or three plus one, which is four. But you might be able to see, I mean, that's got to be four, right? Anyway, so inside the parenthesis, I worked it out to be four. So I'm going to write everything out again, just so I don't make a mistake. Three fifths plus a quarter times four, and then cubed. And then I'm just going to it's don't rush. You just just make sure you don't make. If you make one mistake, the whole thing's wrong. So there's no point in rushing, right? Take our time. So we did the parentheses. Great. Parentheses are done. Now, do we have any exponents, squares, or cubes? Oh, we do indeed. We have a cubed. And the cube, by the way, is just touching the parentheses, so it's only applied to this 4 here. Now, it's not applied to the quarter at all. So um, that is 4 times 4 times 4. Calculate that. Okay, let's do that then. 4 times 4 is 16, isn't it? So I've got 16, and then times 4 again. 4 6 is 24, carry the 2. 1 4 is 4, and 2 is 6. So that 4 cube becomes the number 64. So I have 3 fifths plus 1 quarter multiplied by 64. Okay. So great, I've got rid of parentheses. I got rid of my, I, I applied my exponents. So parentheses are done, exponents are done. Now I've got a multiplication and an addition. Which should I do first, multiply or add? I should multiply first, right? So how do I do a quarter times 64? Write 64 as a fraction first of all. 64 as a fraction is 64 over 1. Now, can anything cross cancel? I think so. I think 4 into 4 goes one time, last time I checked, and 4 into 6 goes twice, or sorry, once, silly me, once remainder 2, and 4 into 24 goes 6 times. So, I, what I get is um, 1 times 16 is 16, 1 times 1 is 1, 16 over 1. But of course I'm still, I still haven't dealt with the 3 fifths. So just leave that as 16 over 1. That might help to just leave it like that. Because now the last thing to do is add. We've done everything else. The whole thing has become 3 fifths plus 16 over 1, right? So can you uh, make the bottoms the same and add them? Can you find a lowest common denominator? Or um, who am I kidding? There's a really easy way to do this, isn't there? You might have seen it already. Hold on a second. Let's look at this a different way. What am I thinking? 3 fifths plus 16 over 1. Hold on a second. That is 16. What's 3 fifths plus 16? It is 16 and how many fifths? 16 and 3 fifths, isn't it? Yes, indeedy. 16 and 3 fifths, right? Why didn't we think of that? Well, maybe you did. Yeah, so that of course just becomes 16 and 3 fifths. So that answer just kind of popped out at the end. That was nice. I mean, if you had have made the bombs the same and added, you you would you would end up you would end up with 16 and 3 fifths anyway. It's just that it was kind of obvious just to do that. Hopefully, it was it was a lot easier to do that. I mean, okay. So example five. By all means, press pause and try it yourself. Okay, now I'm going to do it. So we've got to definitely watch out for parent for PEMDAS on this guy. We have parentheses indeed. We've got to start with parentheses and we've got two thirds plus seven thirds. So we're going to start there, calculate what's inside here. Oh great, the bottoms are the same, that's handy. So two thirds and seven thirds gives nine thirds, which is, what's nine thirds? 9 divided by 3? Three? 3, right? So this inside becomes, the thing inside parentheses becomes just the number 3. I'll just write everything else out now, okay? I've got 4 and an eighth plus a half times 3 squared. So I've got a plus, I've got a multiply, I've got a squared. What do I do next? 
Well, I took care of my parentheses now. Do I have to any take care of any exponents? Oh yes indeed, there's an exponent, the squared. And by the way, it's only touching the parentheses. So it's only applied to the three, not applied to the half, just the three. Now three squared is three times three, which is nine, right? So I have a half times nine. So write everything else out. So great, I took care of parentheses, I took care of exponents, now I've got to multiply and and I've got an addition. What do I do first? Multiply or add? Multiply or add first. Multiply, right? Okay, so do you have to write that as a um, mixed number or as, as an improper fraction or something? Let's see, one half times, what's nine as an improper fraction? Something over one. 9 over 1, right? So that becomes 9 over 2. Alright? And I have uh, 9 over 2, and I have uh, 4 and 1 eighth to add to that. Okay? So that's good. I did the multiply and all that. I mean, you can do this uh, whichever way you prefer. You could turn this into an improper fraction, you could add them if you like. Um, I, it, it, seems, it seems to me that it might be e a little bit easier to turn this into a mixed number and then add them. So I'm going to do that. Um, if you get the right answer, you're right. So I don't really mind how you do it as long as you get the right answer. But um, it, it seems to me, because if I turn this into a mixed number, 2 into 9 goes 4 times remainder 1, right? So 4 and a half. So I have basically 4 and 1 eighth uh, plus 4 and a half. Okay, now <coughs> I need to get a lowest common denominator before anything else happens to add the eighth and the half together, right? So two times what gives eight? Two times four, right? Okay, so this of course becomes um, this guy becomes uh, four and four eighths. Okay, and of course I have this four and one eighth here added onto it. So four and one eighth and four and four eighths. Well, four and four is eight. That's handy. One eighth and, and four eighths is how many eighths? <coughs> five eighths. Okay. <coughs> so the answer is eight and five eighths. If you get eight and five eighths, you're correct. Um, at this point, of course, you, you could have turned. If you wanted to, you could go. You know, eight times four is thirty-two and one. You could go. Yeah, okay, that's thirty-three eighths plus nine over two. You know, get a common denominator times this by four over four and keep going that way, and you'll end up with eight and five eighths. I mean, it doesn't matter if you do it this way or this way, as long as you get the right answer, it's fine. Okay, <coughs> and let's see. Okay, here's example six. Five times this plus four times this. <coughs> Again, we've got to watch out for order of operations, don't we? And we need to first simplify anything inside a parenthesis. And then we've got to do exponents and so on. So hold on a second. What have we got inside parentheses first of all? We have three tenths plus a fifth, and we also have the half plus the seven tenths. Now <coughs> We need to go from left to right, so we'll do this one first, and then we'll do this one, and then we'll work on everything else. So just start with three tenths plus one fifth, okay? So do we need a lowest common denominator here? <coughs> Excuse me. We do. What do I multiply five by to get ten? Five times two, right? Okay, so that gives me three tenths plus two tenths, which is five tenths. Okay, and um, does that uh, simplify? I guess it does. Um, but um, you could simplify it, but but the thing is, we're going to have. Look at this. Are we going to have tenths over here as well? I, I don't know if it might might just leave that like that for now. Let's see. And then we got plus four, and then okay. Let's let's simplify this guy. 
Oh no, what am I what am I thinking? Don't be silly. I'll just it just gets too confusing. We always simplify these guys, don't we? That's a half. Okay, five times a half. And then plus uh four times whatever this becomes. Okay. So um so we've got to simplify the half plus the seven tenths. Alright. Okay, so um, make a get a lowest common denominator uh, times two by what to get ten? Two times five, isn't it? Or five over five, right? Okay, so we got five. One times five is five over two times five is ten. Five tenths plus seven tenths, which gives me twelve tenths. And simplify that. Two into twelve goes six times. Two into ten goes five times. So that is six fifths. So inside this parenthesis it became half, inside this parenthesis it became six fifths. Now we've got a couple of multiplications and an addition. If I consult PEMDAS order of operations, it says we must do what next? Multiply or, or add? We must multiply from left to right. So we go do this multiplication, then this multiplication. Okay? So how do I multiply 5 times a half? I need to turn the 5 into an improper fraction. 5 over 1 times 1 over half, 1 over 2. And uh, nothing cross cancels, so of course that's just 5 over 2. Now multiply this. You've got to write 1 as a fra 4 as a fraction, right? 4 over 1 and then times 6 over 5. Does anything cross cancel? Nope. So 4 times uh, 6 is 24 and 1 times 5 is 5 and of course I've got to add. I'm adding these guys. So I did my parentheses and I got a half and four, 6 fifths there. I did my multiplications. I got 5 over 2 plus 25, 4 over 5. Now you know, if you want, you can go ahead and turn it into improper into uh, mixed numbers, or you could just go ahead and um, and just get a get a lowest common denominator and add them the way they are. It doesn't matter. You know, I'm just, I'm actually going to get a lowest common denominator on these guys and just add them. So um, two times five or five will work and 5 times 2. That will make the bottoms the same. Or the lowest common denominator of course is 10 because 2 goes into 10, 5 goes into 10. Right? So times this guy by 5 over 5 times this guy by 2 over 2 and this gives me 25 tenths plus 24 times 2. 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 2 is 4, that's 48 tenths. And add those guys together 25 and 48. Take my time. No point making a mistake. We do lots of work. If you make a mistake long here, you get the whole thing wrong. Why would you do that? Just take your time. 5 and 8 is 13. Put 3 down, carry the 1. 1 and 4 is 5. 5 and 2 is 7. And 73 over 10 is what I get. And what's that as a mixed number? 10 into 73 goes 7 times. Remainder, 3. Seven and, or seven and three tenths, right?